Hello and welcome back. We're now going to look at the third of the tests in the testing sequence, which is insulation resistance. This test requires a greater amount of thought and preparatory work, particularly on larger installations. And is it necessary to ensure that the insulation of conductors is adequate and not damaged, and that live conductors or protective conductors are not short-circuited? Regulation 612.3.1 of BS7671 requires Insulation resistance shall be measured between live conductors and between live conductors and the protective conductor connected to the earthing arrangement. We therefore need to ensure the connection to earth has been made before proceeding. Where appropriate during this measurement, line and neutral conductors may be connected together. This can be useful if certain equipment cannot be disconnected to allow line to neutral tests. For example, where the lamps cannot be removed from parts of lighting circuits. It also states in Regulation 612.3.3 that where circuits include electronic devices which are likely to influence the results or be damaged, only a measurement between the live conductors connected together and the earthing arrangement shall be made. Alternatively, these items of equipment should be disconnected for the duration of this test. Regulation 612.3.2 of BS7671 requires the insulation resistance measured shall be considered satisfactory if it complies with the relevant value given in Table 61. Circuits operating at a nominal voltage up to and including 500 volts, with the exception of SELV and PELV circuits, require a test voltage of 500 volts DC to be applied, and the minimum insulation resistance acceptable is 1 mega ohm, 1 million ohms. Although this value is satisfactory for compliance with regulation on new installations, it is recommended that if values below 2 mega ohms, 2 million ohms, are obtained, the reason for such a low reading should be investigated further to ensure that this is not due to a latent fault. On new installations, particularly small single phase installations, the value may be higher than the test instrument can measure, e.g. for the fluke test instrument shown, greater than 500 megohms. And if there is damage to insulation or a short circuit in the circuit wiring, this will show up during the test as a low resistance reading, 0 megohms. 612.3.2 goes on further to state that where surge protective devices or other equipment are likely to influence the test or be damaged, this equipment should be disconnected before carrying out the test. Where it is not reasonable to do this for surge protective devices, a test may be carried out by reducing the test voltage to 250 volts. To perform the test, we need to use an insulation resistance test instrument or a multifunction test instrument switched to the insulation resistance setting and ensure that the appropriate test voltage is selected, e.g. 250, 500 or 1000 volts as appropriate to the circuit being tested. Remember, all switches should be switched to the on position. And also remember to test all parts of the circuit, for instance, where two-way switching is installed on lighting circuits, operate the switches in both positions, at both switches during the test. Also, where a circuit supplies equipment such as an electric motor which is controlled through a switch and a contactor, this may need to be temporarily switched on and the contactor closed for the duration of the test. For smaller single phase installations, it may be possible to carry out the insulation resistance test for the entire installation at the distribution board or consumer unit with all circuit breakers and switches in the on position. A common mistake when carrying out the insulation resistance test is to forget to switch the circuit breakers on with the result that a high reading is measured on the circuit indicating a satisfactory test result, but the circuit has not actually been tested. If the test is carried out with the circuit breakers and switches on and a low value is obtained, the source of the low value will need to be identified. 
A procedure to do this is to switch off all circuit breakers, then disconnect and test each final circuit individually until the circuit with the low value is identified. Then carry out further investigation on the affected circuit to establish the cause of the low reading and take suitable remedial action to correct any fault discovered. And remember, any defect or omission discovered should be made good and the test repeated to obtain a satisfactory value before proceeding further. Testing the entire installation in this manner is not possible where residual current devices are present in the distribution board or consumer unit because some types of RCD may cause a low insulation resistance reading due to the functional earth connection associated with these devices, or they may be damaged if the RCD contains electronic components. The single phase distribution board on test rig 2 shows an example of this where the switch disconnector or main switch is a 30 milliamp RCD. The insulation resistance test is carried out by connecting the test probes in turn between line to neutral, line to earth, then neutral to earth in turn at each individual final circuit and a high ohmic value is measured greater than 500 megohms. The measured value is then recorded on the schedule of test results in the relevant column provided for insulation resistance. It may be useful to explain that the live to live column is used to record the outcome of line to neutral tests, but should also be used to record the outcome of line to line tests, which would be relevant in three phase installations. The live to earth column is provided to record the outcome of both the line to earth and the neutral to earth tests. When recording the information, it is the lowest value obtained that is recorded. In complex installations, it will be necessary to subdivide the installation into parts to make insulation resistance testing easier to carry out. For example, on test rig 2, we carried out insulation tests on the final circuits connected to the single phase distribution board at that position, but would not want to test them from the circuit supplying it connected to at the three phase distribution board because of the 30 milliamp RCD main switch as this would need to be switched on, but could be damaged or show up as a low IR value. The circuits connected to the three phase distribution board may require to be tested separately from each other and will require additional insulation resistance testing over and above that carried out for the single phase distribution board. This will require tests between live conductors, i.e. between each line conductor and between each line conductor and neutral, and also between each of the live conductors and earth, i.e. between each line conductor to earth and between the neutral conductor to earth. The three phase socket outlet circuit is an example of where the contactor in circuit will need to be temporarily closed to the on position for the duration of this test. Now that concludes this section on insulation resistance. So now watch the next in the series on polarity.